Hey, and welcome to Comics Crash Course. So last week we talked about the history and context that created the underground comics movement, and this week I'll talk about some of the artists who actually did the work. So as always, when I do one of these quick introductions, I am invariably leaving out details about the artists I do talk about, and unfortunately leaving out some interesting figures altogether. This is meant to be a very quick introduction to some of the biggest names, and if you want to find out more, get in touch! So with that caveat, let's begin with the most famous name, the figurehead of the underground comics movement, Robert Crumb. So Crumb is known for his exaggerated, detailed style that exhibits his anxiety and obsessive tendencies. He's also known for his intensely controversial work, uh, some of which is intended to be satirical and some of which is intended to act as a kind of confessional for his deepest anxieties, obsessions and fears and desires. He seemed to enjoy pushing against taboos for shock value, but also used that shock to question so-called social values. He became the de facto face of the underground movement, in part because of his influence in the San Francisco comics scene, and in part because of his role as the founder of the Zap Comics Collective, and influence in getting other comics artists to start publishing. He was also the first comic artist to have a gallery show dedicated to his work. For many of these reasons, his influence was unquestioned for many years, though more recently some comics fans and scholars have begun to push back against the highly objectionable material in some of his work and question his legacy to a certain extent. Gilbert Shelton got his start in Texas, but would join the Zap Comics Collective and head to San Francisco not long after publishing Feds and Heads number 1. His most famous work is the fabulous furry Freak Brothers, who first appeared in Feds and Heads. These guys are kind of a countercultural Three Stooges, and have appeared in their own title since 1971, and ran on and off in 1997. S. Clay Wilson said he had, quote, a morbid fascination with deviancy, and this resulted in graphic, twisted comics filled with sex, violence, and excess. His style is exaggerated and overly detailed, with the psychedelic twist of a bad trip. His most famous character, the Checkered Demon, still inspires controversy to this day. Kim Deitch was the son of animator Gene Deitch, and therefore it's unsurprising his style is influenced by the look of classic American animation, like Fleischer Studios, and of newspaper strips. His comic book in the underground days was Corn Fed Comics. However, these days he's best known for his graphic novel, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, which was created throughout the 1980s and published in 1991 to great critical acclaim. Justin Green was not as popular as some of the other artists I'll be mentioning at the height of the underground movement, but his Binky Brown Meets the Holy Virgin Mary, a surreal exploration of Green's sexual anxieties and Catholic guilt, is considered by many comic scholars to be the first graphic memoir, and as such would be influential on many later graphic memoirists, including Art Spiegelman, Alison Bechdel, and many others. Bill Griffith found his first success in the underground with his series Young Lust, a send-up of 1950s and 1960s romance comics. However, he's best known for his series Zippy the Pinhead, which first appeared in the underground newspaper The Berkeley Barb, but was eventually syndicated in underground and alternative newspapers across the nation. Skip Williamson began as a political cartoonist, then worked on the underground Chicago newspaper The Chicago Mirror with Jay Lynch. After reading Zap Comics number one, Lynch and Williamson decided to convert it to an underground comic book, Bijou Funnies. Lynch created the characters Pat and Nard, while Williamson is best known for Snappy Sammy Snoot, a character popular enough he appeared on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Unlike many underground artists who worked in the milieu of exaggerated, cartoony caricature, Spain Rodriguez was most influenced by the hard-edged sci-fi comics of artists like Wally Wood. His most famous character, Trash Man, combined radical leftist politics with hyper-macho imagery inspired by his time as a member of a motorcycle club. Howard Cruz had a cutesy style with his series Barefoot, something readers found to be a breath of fresh air in the too-edgy, anxiety-ridden, hyper-masculine world of underground comics. While he was openly gay, it wasn't a major component of his work until he founded Gay Comics with publisher Dennis Kitchen, which ran from 1980 to 1984. Upset by the boys' club mentality of the majority of the underground comics movement, Trina Robbins established the first comic book made by all women creators, It Ain't Me Babe Comics, in 1970. She was also a major influence in establishing women's comics, an anthology series for women underground creators published between 1972 and 1992. She remains an important feminist historian and critic in the comics world to this day. One of the other major female voices in underground comics was Aileen Kaminsky-Crump, 
Aileen Kaminsky met Arkham after moving to San Francisco in the early 1970s to make comics. The two married in 1978. She initially worked with Trina Robbins on women's comics, but the two fell out over questions about the role of feminism and women in the movement and in art. Kaminsky Crumb founded Twisted Sisters Comics, another anthology series for women. She still works a day, though she doesn't make comics so much anymore as focuses on painting and photography. Then there's Dennis Kitchen. He was inspired to self-publish comics after reading R. Crumb and Shelton. However, he's best known for becoming a successful publisher and editor of independent and underground comics. He's the founder of Kitchen Sink Press, which published many underground figures, as well as important contemporary artists like Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Dave McKean, Alec Campbell, James O'Barr, and Scott McCloud. In fact, the first edition of Understanding Comics was published in Kitchen Sink Press. Dennis Kitchen is also responsible for, for Marvel's short-lived foray into publishing underground comics. Comics Book was an underground comic book series published from 1974 to 1976, originally by Marvel Comics. So it was the first time comics of this type were published by a mainstream company. Edited by Dennis Kitchen, Comics Book featured artists like Joel Beck, Howard Cruz, Kim Deitch, Justin Green, Will Fowler, Gary Hallgren, Dennis Kitchen, Trina Robbins, Art Spiegelman, Skip Williamson, and S. Clay Wilson. While it did not depict quite the explicit content that was often featured in underground comics, it was way more socially relevant than anything Marvel was publishing at the time. Stan Lee had wanted Marvel to be relevant, but was also apprehensive about the blowback. So he insisted that comics book not carry the Marvel name, and instead released it under the Curtis Magazine's imprint, crediting himself on the masthead as an instigator. This magazine format and its different distributor allowed Marvel to dispense with the restrictions of the Comics Code Authority and forego ads. Kitchen was also able to win a number of unprecedented concessions for his contributors, including the return of all of their artwork, and eventually allowing artists to keep their copyrights. So comics book number one was launched with a cover date of October 1974, and in addition to comics, issues of comics book usually featured text pieces like Kitchen editorials, interviews, and the letters page. But unfortunately, Comics Book either failed to find its audience, was mishandled by baffled newsstand distributors, or more likely, both. Lee canceled the book when issue number three hit the newsstands. Kitchen, however, had assembled two additional issues, so after a year of negotiations, he persuaded Marvel to let his own Kitchen Sink Press publish issues number four and five in 1976. And the last artist I want to talk about today is Art Spiegelman. Spiegelman is very much a bridge between the underground comics movement and the beginning of alternative comics as a publishing practice. Now, Even if you're not a huge fan of comics or a scholar of comics, you probably recognize Spiegelman's name because of his world-famous graphic memoir, Mouse. The earliest version of Mouse actually appeared in 1972 in an underground comic book called Funny Aminals. Prisoner on a Hell Planet, a short story which appears in Mouse, first appeared in Short Order Comics in 1973. So Spiegelman was active in the underground comics movement, but by the late 70s, he began to be disillusioned with it. As he once said in an interview, quote, what had seemed like a revolution simply deflated into a lifestyle. Underground comics were stereotyped as dealing only with sex, dope, and cheap thrills. They got stuffed back into the closet, along with the bong pipes and love beads as things started to get uglier. Spiegelman had a few ideas for how to keep comics revolutionary and on the cutting edge, and he was ready to put them into practice. But that's for next time. See you then.